Hello, so welcome to the second to the last uh, video discussion that I will be making for the midterm of this subject. So, we are down to the discussion for the trace minerals or the micro minerals. Okay, so uh, in the latest, uh, in, the, in the last video that I made, I, I discussed the macro minerals. So, in this discussion, uh, we are going to tackle about the micro minerals, starting with the most abundant micro mineral in the body, which is, of course, I've told you already uh, previously, no, that it is iron. Okay, so iron um, is zero point zero zero four percent of an average man's body. Okay, and most of our iron is actually um, stored in the hemoglobin which is the main uh, protein that we can find in our red blood cells or erythrocytes, and myoglobin, which is, you know, just the hemoglobin equivalent of muscles, okay? So therefore, myoglobin is not found in your blood, but it is found rather in the muscles, okay? So hemoglobin and myoglobin are similar, but the only difference is that um, your myoglobin is a smaller protein and it is found in muscles while your hemoglobin is a larger protein and it is found in the red blood cells but both of them function the same which is to bind oxygen okay because you know that oxygen is what we need the most so in order to fuel our metabolism Okay, so they are needed in much smaller amounts compared to the macro minerals, but they are still essential. Okay, so uh, usually no, ang content sa atong mga foods, especially sa plants no, they are dependent on when, on where they are grown, or whether that soil is rich of those minerals or not. So, an, a very important example of that is your selenium. So, the selenium content of plants largely depends on the soil content where those plants are grown. Okay? So, um, yeah. But generally, no, animal sources of trace minerals or of microminerals are generally better absorbed compared to the plant sources. Except, siguro sa manganese because... Um, plant sources of manganese are more bioavailable compared to when they are found in animal sources. Okay, so that's uh, manganese is a little exception uh, in the in this rule of thumb. No. Ika record ba ko? Okay. Sige. So let's start with iron. So it is found in minute amount in every cell. Yeah. Uh, I've told you that it is found in our hemoglobin and myoglobin. Iron is generally less bioavailable. That means only 15% of we eat is actually absorbed. Okay, so say for example, if that food has, you know, 10 milligrams of iron, so only 15% of that 10 milligrams is ultimately absorbed. So that's why it's it's uh, less bioavailable or generally speaking iron is not that bioavailable so that's why it's very imp it's a very important trace mineral and that explains a lot why um, iron deficiency anemia is the most common micronutrient deficiency worldwide because of because naturally we, we really cannot uh, absorb iron efficiently so um natay to kinds of dietary iron so when you say dietary iron or yeah um when 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 dietary is combined with um or or the term dietary is combined with nutrients that means the 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 form of that nutrient that is found in our diet so th there are two kinds of dietary iron we have heme and non-heme iron so heme iron is actually found um from um animal sources okay especially those animal sources that are exposed or that are part of the muscle 
of the muscle tissues. Okay? So, meaning, this is the kind of iron that is in the hemoglobin form or that is in the uh, myoglobin form. Okay? So, um, if you look at the uh, hemoglobin and myoglobin molecules, ang naasa center is iron. Okay? So, sige, let's take uh, a look at the, you know, how, how, how do this uh, hemoglobin and myoglobin look like? Then, kung ahan ito, makita ng iron, no? Hemoglobin, okay, and myoglobin. Okay, so, look at the center of that, it's fe. You know that fe is the symbol for iron. Okay, as claro, no? Yeah, at the center of the hemoglobin molecule, it is found, or the, the iron is found, okay, in every um, unit of the hemoglobin. Okay, can eh? Yeah, so center, okay, center of that molecule, no? It is where we can find iron. So, yeah, him iron is the kind of iron, the kind of dietary iron that we can find bound with the globin proteins that you know are found in myoglobin and hemoglobin. Okay? So, mauna ang imuang him iron. Okay. Between him iron and non him iron, him iron is much more bioavailable. That means we can absorb um, a larger proportion of him iron compared to non him iron because your non him iron is the kind of iron that we can find generally from plant sources. Okay? So, him iron is better absorbed than non him iron. But, we can actually um, accelerate the absorption of both kinds, especially non-heme iron, ha, when we take that with vitamin C. Okay? Because you know already that vitamin C um, increases the bioavailability, bioavailability, bioavailability of iron. So, um, it increases the absorption rate of um, iron. Okay? So, yeah, animal flesh, okay? That is when we can find your heme iron. Non-heme iron is a plants, okay? Then, it is not, so since your plants do not have any hemoglobin or myoglobin, so that's why the, the kind of iron that we can find from the dishes of plants are called non-heme, okay? There are animal sources that are, that are not heme, Okay, that means non-heme iron nung makit anato anak ng mga animal sources. Okay, so example is eggs and milk. Okay, since ang eggs ug milk, wak man wak man tay makit an diha ang hemoglobin or myoglobin. Kaya wak may blood diha, di ba? And then wala put muscles diha. So that's why the iron that we can find from um, eggs and milk are considered non-heme. Okay. So, less gap yeah, ang ang bioavailability. Ana. So, that's why dili kayo, that, that explains nga nung ang milk is not really considered a rich source of iron. Because nan him ang naadiha, no? Okay? So, uh, how do we absorb iron? So, this that is determined by the body's need. Yeah, as a general rule for minerals, no? Nakadepende sa body pool size. Um, it has to be acidic acidic enough in order to um, induce iron absorption. So, upper small intestine is the absorption side. So, somewhere between duodenum and jejunum. Okay? So, but um, in reality, no, diya sa middle sa jejunum o duodenum. Um, hindered by phytic acid, ucetic acid, so those antinutrients, no? Um, zinc competes with, with iron for absorption. Because both of them are divalent. So, that means 2 plus no ang charge. So, uh, katong yung explain na ko uh, in the last video about uh, antagonism when it comes to absorption. It is also applicable for iron and zinc. So, that's why dili magpalabi. Dapat balance. Dapat, um, none of them is very high uh, nga maghinder sa absorption of the other. Okay. 
Uh, your, the main function of iron in the body is of course to bind oxygen. So, para makadeliver ta og oxygen through blood. For perfusion throughout the uh, throughout all cells of the body. Okay? Because uh, our cells are dependent with oxygen. Para mag, mauna siya ang, ang oxygen manggun ang main driver sa atong metabolism. So, para ma, um, sa name? Mainly, in order to for us to help um, get energy from the foods that we eat, kinahanglan og oxygen because oxy oxygen is the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain. So, without oxygen, no, for, for how many seconds, we can literally die. So, that's why your, your oxygen is very essential. And, how do we secure that we have enough oxygen for our body? Thanks to the iron that is in the hemoglobin and myoglobin, okay, uh, we are able to carry, to transfer oxygen. Okay? So, transports oxygen and carbon dioxide. Okay, not only oxygen, but also carbon dioxide. So, uh, hemoglobin also binds to carbon dioxide for release, for exhalation, out of the respiratory system. So, myoglobin um, acts similarly with hemoglobin. So, it also binds with oxygen. Um, it actually stores no oxygen in in the muscle, okay. So para um, um in case of physical movement, na ada yun tay makuha ng oxygen ready from the myoglobin, okay. Para uh, mag pa, in order to drive um aerobic metabolism, okay. It's because kung kulang og oxygen, ang mahitabo is lactic acid fermentation and that is not good in the long term for the muscle tissues. Okay? So, kinahanglan og oxygen. So, uh, iron is also a very important part of the electron transport chain. Okay? It's also an, an enzyme cofactor for, for um, various enzymes. Um, it also uh, has immune function. It is also needed by uh, the cells of our immune system. And it is very important in the drug detoxification pathway. So, iron deficiency anemia, I've told you, it's the most common form of micronutrient deficiency. Even more common than iodine deficiency disorder or even vitamin A deficiency. So, iron deficiency anemia can be diagnosed by um, measuring the hemoglobin and hematocrit levels. So, if the hemoglobin is very low, uh, lower than the, the cutoff, cutoff values, then that means... Um, Together with other observations, no, we, we can really say that that particular individual or patient has iron deficiency anemia. So, um, one of the most common causes of iron deficiency anemia is insufficient intake. Okay? And uh, the others would be um, due to bleeding. Okay? Pwede ta maka-experience iron deficiency anemia. Increased needs, um, say for example, during pregnancy then um, the pregnant woman uh, is not able to to meet the increased need so that's why magka anemia siya okay so mauna kinahanglan og iron supplements no during pregnancy uh, inadequate absorption in cases of for example ang patient na ay celiac disease or animal absorption disease or na ay hypochloridia or achloridria or lack of hydrochloric acid okay you know that acidity is very important for iron absorption. Okay? So, para mas dali ma-absorb ang iron, kinangan o acidity. So, if kulang ang production of gastric acid, so, iron absorption would be really compromised. Okay? So, um, yeah. Uh, in, yeah, vegans. Okay? Especially, um, if the vegan diet um, is really restrictive of, of iron, no? Um, actually, um, iron is not really an issue na in vegan diets because um, na may mga pamaagi no para uh, mutaas ang ang iron intake nato. Say for example, if um, mag pair up lang taog vitamin C no together with um, those plants that are rich in iron, although nanhim ang naadiha ang iron, but uh, gi pair up man mo siya ni with vitamin C. So that's why um mas mutaas ang absorption rate and then in that case no iron would no longer be an issue. Okay? 
if inana. But um, na among good mga vegan diets that are not balanced, okay? Or ka nang pa-vegan-vegan lang pero dili di ay, you know, healthy ang mga food choices niya or mga plant food choices nga gi-incorporate, wala yung muvaba na nahitabo. So, yeah. So that's why um sa kana nga case no, dili na maayo. And iron is one of those nutrients that can easily be lacking in in that kind of vegan diet. Parasitism. Okay, because um kaning mga kuan sa to ang in, uh, intestines as a infected nga ko ano, mga individual. Um the parasites um tend to steal away the iron from the body's absorption. So that's why mahimong iron deficient ang host uh, kadugayan, no? Okay? And um you know that I don't know if you have Okay. Um dito sa inyo hang nutrition assessment, uh, I don't know if nakatakel na mo sa clinical assessment, but uh iron deficiency anemia is one of the most recognizable um micronutrient deficiencies uh using clinical assessment no so by just looking at the superficial features of the patient we can really we can um uh, it can help um in diagnosing no the the underlying um, micronutrient deficiency problem so for example if um pallor is seen or is evident unsay pallor um paleness no okay kay siguro kulang ang red blood cell production kay tungod kay kulang pud ang iron okay because we we cannot produce red blood cells without iron uh brittle nails or um caving of nails so katong colonicia no okay difficult to breathing poor growth okay so those are indications of iron deficiency anemia Okay. Uh, paleness on on the palm so that's palmar pallor or paleness of the conjunctiva that's conjunctival pallor okay so what are the food sources of um, your iron so red meats enriched grains fortified cereals okay milk is a poor source because of the explanation that I had last time uh, previously okay but um the most bioavailable form of iron is again sa red meat kay him iron manang naadiha when we use a skillet or when we use a cooking pan that is uh, cast iron it can actually add up to the iron content of the dish that we are cooking on it kay during the cooking process mang good pwede mag leak ang mga iron atoms from the pan to the food that that it is being cooked that is being cooked in that uh, vessel no so yeah um but uh, it, it is not a requirement dili ra pud kanang dako pud kayo yang contribution okay uh, it's just an information no nga when we use a cast iron skillet um uh, maka add up siya sa iron content sa food but uh it's not that important like um kinahanglan gyud nga magbay gyud tag iron, uh, cast iron skillet maugyod na atong pangluto no so it's not like that okay uh, just an information lang uh, maka-add up siya to the iron content of the food okay non heme iron is not as well absorbed compared to the heme iron so you have to um take that no with vitamin C or you have to eat that along with the sources of heme iron okay disregard this ha because nanium iron is not found in animal flesh but it is found in eggs, milk, vegetables, grains and other plant foods because you know that in animal f- flesh him iron ang naadiha for your iron needs you have to check for the PDRI okay but um you would notice no um a large discrepancy between the iron needs of males and then the iron needs of females because you would expect especially sa uh, reproductive years sa babae mas dako gyud ang kinahanglan nga iron for females than males because you know that females experience menstrual cycle and then of course menstruation so bleeding okay so that would um 
that, that requires ka ng a large um, ka ng replenishment of iron. Okay? Daghan man ma-release nga dugo. Okay? So, that's why um, females do need a lot more iron compared to males. Toxicity of iron is also as dangerous as deficiency of iron. Okay? There is um, a genetic disorder that is called as hemochromatosis. Okay? So, um, the, the carrier or the, the, the affected individual can overabsorb iron in the diet. So, taas ang absorption rate sa iron sa kaning mga individuals. No? So, uh, the tendency is that ma overload ang body with iron and then the manifestation would be magred ang ang patient okay due to a lot of red blood cells that that are um that are produced due to increased iron okay so the too much iron at deposit can lead to organ damage okay yeah so mauna nga dili dili pud ta magpalabi og supplements no so that's why um iron supplements um must be prescribed by a doctor and then para ma-sure gyud nga naa kay anemia maupo ni ang problem no sa mga lay people kay um isa or duha lang nga uh, kanang symptom nga ka feel nila sa anemia mag-assume dayon silang naa sila anemia without even undergoing an appropriate lab test so para uh, makabalutan no nga naagid kay iron deficiency anemia you have to go to a clinic or to a, to a hospital or to request a lab order um, para ma-measure ang mga hematocrit, hemoglobin levels and in order to really diagnose if you have iron deficiency anemia uh, only by then pwede ka matagaan ma og prescription na mag-buy og iron supplements okay para dili para makuan pud no kaning toxicity of iron kay basic um wala kay prescription then nagtumar kag 3 tablets of iron per day that, that is very excessive and it can lead to adverse effects okay so that is your iron um there is a separate um kanang powerpoint that uh tackles the biochemical um, pathways or biochemical reactions uh, of our minerals no so can I actually so we'll discuss this after this after this kanang powerpoint okay so next is zinc so zinc is uh, also probably one of the most known nutrients okay and um, it is a micro mineral so it is better absorbed from animal source so yeah it follows the rule of thumb nga mas mas absorbable no uh, or mas bioavailable ang minerals kung gikan siya sa animal source so zinc deficiencies um, can cause growth retardation and poor sexual development so that's why your zinc uh, can be found in in high amounts no sa reproductive organs especially sa male reproductive organ because zinc is a cofactor for uh, the formation of sperm or spermatogenesis okay so that's why um zinc uh, zinc deficiency may sometimes lead to um hypofertility among men okay so like it is also a nutritional cause of pagkabaog sa mga lalaki okay Um, yeah, forty percent of zinc from an animal source is absorbed if the body's need are great. Okay, dependent kaya on body's need. So presence of phytic acid decreases absorption. Calcium supplement decreases zinc absorption. Then iron supplement also decreases zinc absorption because again they are divalent. Okay. Then competes with copper and iron absorption. Copper is also another mineral no that is a divalent mineral so that's why maulagi na kung sobra ang isa ka mineral ma compromise yun ang absorption sa ubang minerals because they share the same transporter in the intestines so um functions of zinc daghan ug functions gyud ang zinc 
okay uh, this is probably the nutrient that that has um, the most diverse um, functions that that has uh, one of the most numerous functions zinc is a cofactor to many many enzymes so mauna ang reason nga nung daghan kayo siya functions because ang um, ang um, because kani siya nga zinc no is a cofactor for the, for many enzymes that have diverse functions okay so synthesis of dna rna protein metabolism cell membrane wound healing immune function growth development of sexual organs and bones insulin function component of superoxide dismutase so kani superoxide dismutase is a very powerful antioxidant in the body. So, it's an enzyme that is an antioxidant or it is an enzyme that neutralizes um, reactive oxygen species. So, na ay mga enzymes, no, um, aside from katong anti antioxidant system, katong vitamin E, vitamin C, so, na ay mga separate enzymes actually nga gawork put in neutralizing free radicals. So, superoxide dismutase is one of the um, or zinc is one of the cofactors for superoxide dismutase. So yeah, diverse kay yung function no. Uh, zinc also helps in the uh, storage of vitamin A. So nasa mga interactions with uh, vitamins. Okay. Um, kinahanglan po siya for um, proper taste acuity. So para um, sensitive no ang taste perception sa tao. Okay. One of the manifestations of zinc deficiency is um, malower ang taste acuity. So meaning, it can lead to um, hypojusia. So hypojusia is uh, lowered taste perception. Okay? Yeah. So, um, then zinc is very important in the growth of um, infants. Okay, growth and development of infants. So, zinc deficiency can lead to um, growth retardation. No? Yeah. Mm, growth retardation, slow sexual maturity, loss of taste or ajusha, lethargy, emotional disorders, slow wound healing. So, si zinc po ni mo, kinanglan siya sa para um, accelerate ang wound healing. no. So, that's why... Uh, it's a very important component for the medical nutrition therapy for uh, diseases or for injuries that that call for wound healing. So, um, the food sources of zinc are the following animal products, shellfish, okay, legumes, okay? But, uh, you know that mas bioavailable ang animal sources, no? Okay? Um, in this regard, mas daghan na ang kinahanglan nga zinc sa lalaki kaysa sa babae because again um, mas kinahanglan manggod sa mga lalaki ang zinc for sexual maturation or for yeah for for the development of sperm of sperm cells okay or spermatogenesis yeah so that's why uh, you can you you can expect would know that um, seminal fluid is also rich in zinc because um yeah um 30% of um immense intake of zinc goes down to the semen okay so imagine 30% is a big chunk to a man's intake of zinc so that's why you really can expect that semen is very rich of zinc okay uh you have to check for the PDRI for zinc you, you just have to check it for your own Toxicity of zinc. Okay, zinc is also very toxic. Okay, so that's why dili put pwede nga ka nang masubraan tag zinc. <laughs> okay. So, you, you have to check for the upper limit of zinc para makabalo mo sa upper limit level sa zinc. Okay, nga para dili siya uh, upper limit for toxicity of zinc. Okay? Yeah, so that is for your zinc. Um, rich sources of zinc nga akong ma-share no like kanang that that can easily be recognized as a rich source of zinc is kanang organ meats like liver, dagan kig zinc dia because you know that liver is a storage organ of 
nutrients. So you you can really expect that daghan ka yung zinc diha. And um shellfish, oyster, sapa, tahong, um yeah, um all kinds of shellfish no kay taas og zinc, okay? Especially oyster taas kay taas kay siyang zinc. And then uh, mga legumes, although ang zinc diha no kay less bioavailable. Yeah, but um if tan-awon lang nimo ang zinc content, taas gyud pud ang naa sa legumes. Then sa soybeans, okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's proceed to selenium. So selenium is readily absorbed. Selenium is considered the um the main antioxidant mineral. Okay, so uh, recall that for the fat soluble uh, antioxidant that's vitamin E water soluble antioxidant that's vitamin C um, the mineral antioxidant is selenium okay it's the cofactor for the enzyme called glutathione peroxidase so that enzyme actually catalyzes you know, the um, the action of glutathione against um, ROS okay and recall that glutathione peroxidase um, is involved in the neutralization of the hydroascorbate so that it can be reduced back to vitamin C para um, ma-regain ni vitamin C ang iyang antioxidant capacity okay in turn si ad vitamin C pud ang mag um, mag regenerate sa vitamin E no okay so glutathione peroxidase is um included in the antioxidant system of uh, antioxidant nutrients okay mm, works together with vitamin C with vitamin E okay kay um it it functions as a part of the glutathione peroxidase okay protects the heart and other cells from oxidative damage so that's why the deficiency of selenium can lead to um abnormalities or uh, pathologies on the heart and other ma and other cells deficiency of selenium muscle pain muscle wasting cardiomyopathy these are the um, symptoms of cashin disease and cashin back syndrome okay kani sila nga mga diseases um first nga na observe no sa Tibetan population dito sa China um kay dito sila sa certain region sa Tibet no then katumanggod nga, nga lugar no wala zinc ay wala zinc wala selenium sa yuta okay so that's why ang ilang mga plants kay medyo wala gyud selenium okay then it is reported nga kato sila nga lugar no kay wala pud gakaon kayo og animal sources so that's why nagka selenium deficiency sila in the form of cashin disease okay ang cashin back it's a similar um condition that is also caused by selenium deficiency but na ay slight differences okay so food sources of sel okay we can find um selenium both from animal and plant sources then the bioavailability is the same okay so um okay ra ang like ang plant sources of selenium are comparable to the animal sources of selenium okay but um daghan gyud tay makit-an nga selenium no sa mga nuts okay so nuts are um most famously known to contain um high levels of kanang selenium in fact there is a species of nut that over stores selenium nga ang isa ka nut no um can can give you six times of the rni for selenium and that is your brazil nut okay brazil nut um contains a lot of selenium one just one nut no kanang sobra na siya sa imong kinahanglan nga selenium per day um, it is said to be dapat dili daw ka mo sobrag 6 nuts nga Brazil nga Brazil nut per day or else um, it can cause you toxicity symptom of selenium 
Okay? Yeah, toxicity of selenium, garlicky breath, hair loss, nausea, vomiting, weakness, rashes, cirrhosis of the liver. So, daily food pwede. Um, sobra-sobra ang selenium. Iodine. Okay, this is another uh, micronutrient that is also a very important micronutrient because historically in the Philippines, um, naagyod tayo ginatawag nga, iron, nga iodine deficiency disorder that is the cause of goiter. Okay? So, um, it is found in an iron form, so iodide, iodide form, used for thyroid hormone synthesis. So, regulates metabolic rate, growth, and development. So, how does iodine or iodide regulate metabolic rate as a form of thyroid hormone? Because um, thyroid hormones um, have iodine in their structure. In fact, it's, it's, the few, it's one of the few organic compounds to contain iodine because um, in nature, wala man gabayin ang iodine with other compounds but um, due to some reasons um, si iodine nimo it, it has found its way to the body as a part of the thyroid hormone and uh, what are those thyroid hormones that are involved in regulation of, metaboli of metabolism we have your thyroxine or T4 and triiodothyronine or T3 okay so those two are the um, hormones that that are released by the thyroid gland. So ang yang function is to regulate metabolism. So cretinism is the stunting of fetal growth and mental development as a result of low iodine diet. Okay. So um, as iodine deficiency can lead to goiter because um. The thyroid gland um, mo enlarge siya, no, in an effort to find um, iodine in the blood. So that's why mo expand siya. But um, it is just in vain. No, kay. Wala dahil siya makitaan nga iodine sa blood. Kay. Deficient. Deficient ang intake sa iodine. So that's why it would just enlarge and it would now form um, the noticeable change no, in the size of thyroid gland which is considered goiter okay cretinism is um is a congenital condition no that is caused by maternal iodine deficiency so ang ko ang mama while she was pregnant no kung deficient siya sa iodine so maapektuhan ang child nga naa sa womb no or infant nga naa sa womb and um kung makasurvive man galing to delivery then um yeah ang bata pwede siya mahimong cretin no cretin is uh, short, short for for the normal um size and then um that child will also grow to become mentally retarded due to lack of iodine while the um while the mother is pregnant. Okay? So, it's the stunting of fetal growth and mental development as a result of low iodine diet of the mother. Okay? So, let's look at so, let's look at the kanang ko ano, some pictures of cretinism. Yeah. Okay? So, inani no, like, stunted ang bata. Okay? Although na ay mga kanang ko ano na ay mga genetic causes of kanang dwarfism but one of the causes that is not genetic that is due to nutritional um, factor that's iodine deficiency okay Yeah So tungod na siya sa you know um, maternal iodine deficiency Okay. Okay, so the food sources of iodine, yeah, um 
that's why karon no dili na kaayo um, problem sa ato ang iodine deficiency because ang atong salt is iodized naman although napay uban yung areas no nga um, kulang yapon ang iodized salt sa ilang supply but thanks to um, thanks to you know um, the law that mandates the salt manufacturers to iodize their salt so available na no or taas ng supply sa iodized salt to Filipino communities so that's why very rare na lang karon ang iodine deficiency so um, other dietary sources of iodine would be fish okay seafood especially marine marine fish okay that's why sa unang bukid noon taas kayo ang prevalence rate dili sa goiter kay wa may isda nga gikan sa dagat kay you know uh, this is a landlocked province but thanks to the um asin law so na iodize na ang salt so dili na public health problem ang iodine deficiency so that's why nigamay po dili ang goiter cases no so the plant source of iodine is dependent on the soil content Okay, check for the PDR of iodine for for your needs. Toxicity of iodine. So thyroid hormone synthesis is inhibited. Toxic goiter results. Uh, consumption of seaweed, of too much seaweed can cause acute toxicity of iodine. Okay, but it's actually very rare. Okay. Um dilipud pasabot nung um, in just one sitting, then nakakaon kagdaghan nga seaweed, di na siya pasabot po niya um, makakos ng toxicity sa iodine. Siguro, um, repeated exposure to high consumption of seaweed can um, cause iodine toxicity. Okay. So, um, naapod mga conditions no, that are associated with iodine deficiency that is not congenital. So, when you say congenital, no, that's inborn that is caused um sa wala pa sa wala pa gipanganak no or um dito sa fetal stage okay so naay mga um iodine deficiencies that are not um congenital conditions that are associated with iodine, iodine deficiency those are hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism so hypothyroidism is the um, lack of thyroid gland function due to decreased production of thyroxine and triiodothyronine. So, nga nung na deficient man ang production sa kaning hormones, it's because kulang ang iodine. Okay? Kay ang iodine, kinahanglan man siya for the production of these hormones. So, therefore, kung kulang ni siyang mga hormones, maapektuhan ang function sa hormone sa body. So, kato, ang main function sa, sa thyroxine is to regulate metabolism. So, kung kulang ang thyroxine, um, dili kayo mag-burn ang cells no, of calories. Okay? So, that's why um, ang mga nutrients or ang mga macronutrients, they are just stored. So, that's why um, the clinical manifestation of hypothyroidism is weight gain. Okay? Kaya nga no, dili man ma-burn ang kay para ma-burn man good ang ang kunang ko ano, ang mga macronutrients, ang storage ato for macronutrients, kinahanglan og thyroxine. Okay? Kay siya ang mag-signal for the breakdown of this nutrients. But kung kulang ang thyroxine, so yeah. So mas store lang ang mga fats, then ang glycogen, so that's why it could lead to um obesity. The other the other condition na is called hyperthyroidism. So ang hyperthyroidism opposite. Sobra-sobra ang production sa iodine. That is due to um some cases no that is due to excessive uh, iodine intake. So ang um, kanang ko ano, ang um, manifestation no sa naay hyperthyroidism kay very payat. Kay grabe ang pag breakdown sa mga fats. Okay, sa mga nut sa macronutrients. So, that's why payat or underweight ang patient nga na ay hyperthyroidism. Okay, sobra-sobra ang production sa thyroxine. Okay. So, 
if we compare hypothyroidism versus hyperthyroidism okay Yeah, um, usually po no, kahit, um, prone to hy to hypothermia ang naay hypothyroidism kulang og heat production due to um, decreased um, unsa ni? decreased breakdown of nutrients. Yeah, okay. So weight gain ang hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism is weight loss. Then, dali ratog na won ang nai hypothyroidism Then, um, igangan kayo permino ang nai hyperthyroidism Excessive sweating. Due to excessive breakdown of nutrients. Kay makagenerate pang good ang heat. Ma makagenerate og heat uh, during, you know, um, breakdown of nutrients. Yeah. Okay. So, copper. Okay. This is another micronutrient that uh, yang function na is to aid in iron metabolism. So, absorption is dependent on body's needs. Okay. Absorption is decreased with high intakes of vitamin C, phytic acid, fiber, zinc, iron, and certain amino acids. Okay. Then, ang function of copper ni mo is to increase iron absorption. Okay? Um, kung dili sobra ang ang intake sa copper, no, like, enough lang, it can actually um, aid in the absorption of iron. But if kanang too much sad nga copper, can hinder iron absorption. Um, copper is one of the cofactors for superoxide dismutase. So, not just kanang zinc, no, but also copper. So, copper is also a part of the superoxide dismutase. Um, it is needed in the formation of connective tissues. Okay, it, is, it plays a role on the immune system, blood clotting, brain development, and cholesterol metabolism. Deficiency of copper would also lead to iron deficiency anemia because you know that copper is a helper of iron absorption. So, kung kulang ang copper, um, pwede sad mahinder ang iron absorption. So, that's why deficiency of copper can also lead to iron deficiency anemia. Then, um, ang copper mang good kay needed put sa mga white blood cells. So, that's why a decrease of white blood cell would also um, result from copper deficiency. Bone loss. Copper is needed in uh, bone formation yapon as a, as a part of the hydroxyapatite. So, kaning hydroxyapatite ni Mun, no, daghan, daghan siya mineral components. Uh, inadequate growth, preterm infants at risk, and cardiovascular diseases. Um, function po ni copper, no, as cofactor man po siya sa mga enzymes that are uh, involved in cholesterol metabolism. So, kung kulang o copper, pwede nga mo taas ang cholesterol level sa body. Yeah. So, food sources of copper, makitaan yun natin ang copper greatly in organ meats like liver. Okay, then in seafood and in chocolate. Okay, taas kayo copper ang chocolate, no? Okay, or in cocoa. Okay, so it is also found in mushrooms, legumes, seeds, nuts, and whole grain. Okay. Who is at risk for deficiency? So preterm infants are undernourished infants, intestinal surgery, long-term total parental nutrition, dialysis, burn patients, excess zinc supplement. Yeah. 
So, upper level of copper, yeah, this is not, copper toxicity is not common actually. Okay, fluoride. So, fluoride plays a role in prevention of cavities because fluoride is a very important part of the enamel. And enamel is the strongest substance uh, in the human body, no? Okay? So, kung kulang atong fluoride, no? Um, very brittle or uh, our teeth are not that strong. So, that's why um, kung kulang ang fluoride, then it is susceptible um, for bacterial degradation no? that can lead to cavities. Okay? So, fluoride resists acids and dental caries. So, fluoride inhibits bacterial growth that may cause cavities. The foods, the main food source of fluoride is water. Okay? Um, in the Philipp here in the Philippines, uh, our water does not need to be fluoridated. Kay naturally, ang tubig dire sa Pilipinas is um, okay ang yang fluoride content. But in other countries like in uh, the United States na ay mga certain parts dito nung uh, wala gyud fluoride ang ilang water so that's why um kinahanglan og fluoridation so fluoridation is the process of adding fluoride in the drinking water so para magka fluoride bud ang ilang water dito kay um katumangod nga mga areas um it, it is noticed nga ang mga tao dito no kay taas ang cases sa dental caries kay kulang ang fluoride nga naa sa natural water nila. So, if okay atong water intake, then fluoride is not a concern here. Um, other food sources of fluoride would be tea, okay, seafoods and seaweeds, <laughs> toothpaste. Yeah, um, sometimes mang good, um, naa yun mga traces of toothpaste no, nga matulon na to. So, it, it can actually add up to the intake of fluoride. But, it doesn't mean nga <laughs> maglaklak mo to the face, of course, okay? So, yeah. It just, you know, uh, we, we naturally get it from uh, when we brush our teeth, okay? But, dili na tutuyuon nga tong loon, ha? <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Toxicity of fluoride can lead to dental fluorosis. So, unsa na unsa ng dental fluorosis? Mao na ang toxicity ha. While ang deficiency um can lead to dental caries, ang imuhang toxicity toxicity is dental fluorosis. Yeah, or mottling, di ba? Magdiscolor ang imong teeth due to excessive fluoride deposition. So, muna, dili po pwede nga magpalabitag fluoride. kay toxic po siya. So, fluorosis or mottling of the teeth. So, limit toothpaste to pea size for children that in high amounts can weaken teeth in children. So, muna nga, dili po magpalabi. Okay? Okay. Uh, chromium. Okay. Chromium is one of the least understood um, nutrients. Okay. Um, ang, so far, ang naibawaan na to sa chromium, no, it has a role in the prevention of type 2 diabetes. So, it's called the... It's... Some scientists say nga part siya sa glu glucose tolerance factor it's it's a kind of protein nga magkinahanglan og chromium okay so kaning glucose tolerance factor siya ang ga ku ano it helps in it helps the insulin receptors absorb glucose so para so so that's why um um it has a role in the type 2 diabetes because it prevents type 2 diabetes due to its role in glucose uh, tolerance factor. So, may increase the transport of glucose across the cell membrane. So, impaired glucose tolerance with low intake. So, it has been observed nga kung kulang atong chromium, 
ang intake sa, cro- sa chromium, um, usually galid siya sa glucose intolerance. Okay? That is, you know, the predisposing factor for full-blown type 2 diabetes. Elevated cholesterol and triglycerides are also um, observed no, with low intake. Food sources of chromium. Okay. Little information but it is found in egg yolk and this uh, the rest of the um, food sources that are shown here. Okay. Um, no toxicity from foods, no upper limit, exposed to chromium waste sites, painters and artists exposed exposed to paints. Kaya na may mga chromium ana. Lung and liver, liver damage can result from toxicity of chromium. But um, dietary causes, dili kayo siya common. Okay, it's rare. Manganese. Okay. Manganese is a cofactor for a few enzymes. Okay. I think naaman ata dere. Kabutang no. Yeah, cofactor for a few enzymes in the body and antioxidant and can be substituted by magnesium. Manganese is one of those minerals no, nga nawala sa PDRI. Okay, kay um, some studies show nga ang function ni manganese can be replaced by magnesium. Okay. Yeah. But uh, debatable pa na siya, no? Dili pa na siya certain. Okay, so it has a role in carbohydrate metabolism, role in bone formation. Then, manganese is also a cofactor for superoxide dismutase. So that's why it, it can also act as an antioxidant. Manganese toxicity is seen in individuals working in manganese mine. Okay. Um, manganese is greatly found from plant, so plant sources. So, mas bioavailable ang manganese from plant sources. Muladenum is a cofactor for a few enzymes po. Okay? Like, unsa to? Ah, wala. Nag-iingon din, no? Um, it is important also for sulfur metabolism. So, animal food sources ay yung source. Okay? Yeah, other minerals, we can find it here. Okay. Um, na ay ubang minerals din rin, no? Like nickel, sil- silicon, tin, vanadium, and boron that are, um, that ang iyang essentiality kay debatable pa. Okay, so that being sili pa certain whether or not they are essential. Pero, ang ilang proposed functions or possible functions are given here. So, I will just leave this to your own reading. Okay? Sige. Okay. So, those are for the trace minerals. Okay. Question. Okay, so, you just have to <laughs> generate your question uh, during the... Um, open forum sa atong Google Meet. Okay? Kung na may mga questions, okay? But kung wala, then yeah. I think um, dali raman masabtan po ang slides. Okay? So, next, kanino? Some biochemical reactions involving essential minerals. Okay. Sige. Um, kaning impulse transmission, no? Um, again, this is needed uh, in order for the neurons to communicate with the effector organs, which are usually the muscles. Okay? So, dili na nato ni siya ikuan, no? Um, dili na ta mag-delve deeper into this. Um, Okay na nga, may bawaan ninyo nga. Ang sodium and potassium are needed in impulse transmission. Okay. So, dilit na nako ni siya include no sa inyuhang 
exam although siguro i might ask you about um unsa nga mga nutrients ang needed for impulse transmission but the specifics like this dili na lang nako i um discuss further okay basta um it is uh, involved ay uh, it the, it's their roles uh, in this uh, function no are attributed to them being electrolytes so they they are um so being electrolytes they can conduct electricity so that so na ay mga changes no sa sa concentration nila sa inside of the neuron then outside of the neuron that generates impulse but the specifics dili na lang nako include kay murag taas taas sa gyud kaayo ang ang kanang ko ano ang discussion so this is actually uh you know the transmission of nerve impulse uh through a synaptic cleft okay daghan um involved no nga mga nutrients like your calcium okay and acetylcholine as the neurotransmitter and you know that acetylcholine ang min ang nutrient involved uh, in acetylcholine is choline okay yeah so si calcium na release okay uh, to the cytoplasm Okay, forming now or making the nerve impulse transmission possible through the synaptic cleft. Okay, the role of calcium in, in blood coagulation is because calcium acts as the, as the cofactor for the conversion of prothrombin to thrombin. Okay, thereby forming your clot, sealing the wound. Okay, uh, in muscle contraction, calcium is said to be the the one mineral that that directly causes muscle contraction. Then para mo relax si muscle, kinanglan og ma magnesium. So magnesium is the muscle re relaxant. Okay? There would be a high influx of calcium to the muscle cells during muscle movement. Okay, kay kinanglan man para maka-generate o movement, kinanglan man mag-contract ang muscles. But uh, kinanglan pud nya mag-relax ang muscles afterwards. Okay? So so for muscle relaxation, you need magnesium. Sodium, potassium and chloride um participate also in muscle contraction. So so that during contraction eh, si sodium mo pasulod sa cell, then si potassium mo pagawas. Okay. Mao na siya dapat ang mahitabo during muscle contraction. Okay. How do we store iron in our body? So through uh, ferritin and hemosiderin. Um the main um transporter of iron is transferrin. Okay, so meaning um siya ang mag-transfer no sa iron from one organ to another. Okay? And then um siya pud ang mag-deliver actually no uh, sa iron from the intestines to the organs involved. But um unsa una to siya pag-store? I-store nato siya sa ferritin. Ferritin is a protein that that function as the main storage protein for iron. Then uh, hemosiderin is the secondary protein that is involved in um, iron storage. Okay? Um, for the um, levels of iron, no? Uh, mga cut off risk para ma-determine nato ang IDA IDA stands for iron deficiency anemia okay so for males that's 13 grams of hemoglobin per deciliter for females 12 grams per deciliter okay okay so actually na ani siya sa inyong assessment no then na asad ni sa inyong community uh, nutrition sa NNS okay um this is uh on say foundation ani because you know that iron deficiency uh, can lead to 
reduce hemoglobin levels. Yeah, relative extent of iron stores on the basis of uh, we can actually um measure the amount of or we can actually diagnose po, no, um iron deficiency by um examining the levels of ferritin. So ferritin is you know the the main storage protein for iron. Actually no mas sensitive mag-respond ang ferritin level sa acute um, deficiency of iron. So, um, mas dali na tumakitan ang mga short-term changes sa iron status sa individual if we look at the serum ferritin levels. Zinc, yeah, is an essential cofactor for many enzymes. Okay? Yeah. So, yeah, it is a uh, part of the immune system by serving as the cofactor for many enzymes involved in immune functions. Zinc and male reproductive health, spermatogenesis. So, your zinc is needed in the ribonuclease activity and this enzyme is involved is heavily involved in spermatogenesis. Okay? So, kani, basahon lang ni ninyo, no? Okay? Metallothionine is the protein that is involved in the transfer and storage of zinc in the body. So, kaning metallothionine, no, it's a big protein na iyang function is to transfer and store zinc in the body. Carboxypeptidase is, you know, an enzyme involved in digestion and it needs zinc. Okay, as a cofactor. So, para mag-work siya, kinangalan niya zinc. Zinc is also found in alcohol dehydrogenase. So, para um, mas, ma, ano ni? Para mag-work ang, ang alcohol dehydrogenase. Alcohol dehydrogenase is an enzyme involved in alcohol detoxification. Okay, so it needs zinc in order to function. Carbonic anhydrase is a very important protein in uh, pH balance in the body. So, kinahanglan niya zinc. So, that's why diverse ang kanang ko ano, ang function ni zinc team. Okay? Uh, needed ang zinc as cofactor for many enzymes that have diverse functions. Kani, mauna yung cut-off level sa zinc, no? Ah, uh, yeah. Para ma-determine na to if na zinc deficiency ang population. Uh, metallothionine is also involved in the transport of copper from the intestines to the uh, to the different parts of the body. But it's actually the ceruloplasmin, kani ceruloplasmin, um, that is the main transporter of copper in the blood. Okay, so bali para si metallothionine uh, para ma absorb si copper. Uh, from the small intestines, uh, it transfer siya to metallothionine. And metallothionine gives off its copper to the ceruloplasmin because ceruloplasmin is the main storage protein for copper. Menke syndrome or kinky hair disease is um, a genetic disorder that is involved in kanang deficiency of copper. So, kung na kung naay inani no nga genetic disorder ang may tabo is um dili kayo maka-absorb of copper leading to copper deficiency. Wilson disease is um the complete um reversal of your Menkes disease. Wilson's disease is another genetic disorder but it is involved in copper toxicity. So, mag overabsorb siya sa copper. So that's why ang mata sa kanang affected individual no, and I will since this is na ay copper ring. This is due to excessive accumulation of copper. So ang Menkes disease mag underabsorb sa copper, ang Wilson disease is mag overstore or overabsorb sa copper. 
Iya, yeah. oke. Okay. So, mau niyang comparison between Wilson's disease and Menkes disease. So, that's why nga nung mag-overabsorb ang patient na ay Wilson's disease and then mag-underabsorb of cap o copper ang na ay Menkes disease. So, that's why gitawag po siya nga kinky hair, no? Okay. Gatindog ang infants, ang affected infants sa karangkuan na ay Menkes disease. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Zinc-copper interaction. So, mauni siya, no, ang graphical illustration why um, kung taas ang zinc intake, then pwede ma-lower ang copper absorption and then kung taas po ang copper, pwede saan ma-lower ang zinc absorption. Okay? <clears throat> Because both of them involve metallothionine. Remember that metallothionine also transports zincs other than copper. So that's why um, they compete for the same transporter. Yeah, so that's why a high intake of zinc would lead to the inhibition of the other one. For the thyroid hormones, the T3, this this is the <coughs> triiodothyronine. Nga nung T3 man kay 3 iodine molecule. Then, kaning T4, this is your thyroxine. Nga nung T4 ang gitawag because 4 iodine molecules. So, <clears throat> si tyrosine is actually the one amino acid that is needed in the production of your thyroid gland. So, other than your iodine. Yeah, okay. So, cretinism. Okay, you just have to read this. Okay, na-explain na sa na ko ni. Yeah, kanang cretinism. Iodine deficiency disorders greater. Okay. Mao ang difference po no sa hyper o hypo. Hyper is weight gain. Ay weight loss, sorry. Hypo is weight gain. So usually obese ang na ay hypo no then ang hyper underweight. Okay? Exophthalmos is bulging eyes. This is um usually present in patients experiencing hyperthyroidism. So, Graves' disease is a common cause of hyperthyroidism, an overproduction of thyroid hormone, which causes enlargement of the thyroid and other sy symptoms such as exophthalmos, heat intolerance, and anxiety. Okay. Um, na ay famous star, no, that, or famous artist, no, nga na ay Graves' disease, and that is Sia. Si Sia ni mo is uh, experiencing Graves' disease. Participation, okay. Um, another function of selenium that I was not able to ko ano, to point out is it helps in iodine metabolism, especially in the production of thyroxine. So, para makaproduce ta og triiodothyronine from thyroxine, kinahanglan og selenium because selenium, selenium is a cofactor for this enzyme. 5-iodothyronine deiodinase. Di so, this enzyme um, converts T4 to T3. So, kinahanglan og selenium as the cofactor for this enzyme. So, that's why selenium deficiency can also lead to iodine deficiency disorder. So, mauna ang interaction between selenium and iodine. Okay? Yeah, selenium antioxidant activity because selenium is part of the glutathione peroxidase. Chromium is part of the glucose tolerance factor. Yeah, so it's a protein that is actually bound in the cell in yeah, in it is no, not bound in the cell membrane but it is found near the cell membrane and glucose tolerance factor nimo is somehow helps the insulin receptor in absorbing uh insulin and glucose. So, kung kulang og chromium, ma dysfunctional si GTF and it can lead to diabetes mellitus. Okay. Um, one last thing, no, si molybdenum. Okay. So, <clears throat> natay tulong nga enzymes, actually, that need molybdenum as the cofactor. So, molybdenum cofactor. Yeah, it's a cofactor uh, needed for these enzymes. 
xanthine oxidase, sulfite oxidase, then DMSO reductase. Okay? So, kinanglan og molebdenum. Molebdenum is MO. So, diri nga side, no? So, xanthine oxidase is needed in purine metabolism. So, somehow, um, molebdenum deficiency can also lead to gout. Okay? Kaya kaning gout manggut tungod man asya sa abnormal purine metabolism. So, that's why, um, ang function diri ni molebdenum no, is important in sulfur metabolism because uh, molebdenum is needed in the enzyme that is called sulfite oxidase that is very much uh, involved in the sulfur metabolism in the body. Okay. So, those are the those are the micro minerals. Okay. So, yeah, dagan kay itong information no but um ang ako pud gusto i-emphasize ato no is that your nutrients, especially your minerals no interact with one another. So that means they do not function as individually but um, naagid mga interactions between them. So, ang tawag na is nutrient interactions. No? Dili lang minerals, no, but also your vitamins, as previously shown. Okay? So, yeah. So, that ends our um, discussion for the minerals. Okay? So, thank you for listening and see you sa itong open forum for this.